Now, I recently saw the new Spider-Man movie. Uh, spoilers for the new Spider-Man movie, by the way. And I have to say, it pisses me off just how fucking good this movie is. Oh my god! This is something else. I have to say, I definitely loved it. Uh, there were a few issues, like, for some reason, characters had the need to throw their babies into combat for no reason. But other than that, it was great. The fight scenes were amazing, the writing was great, the art was incredible. Although there was a lot going on at all times, and characters had Black Adam syndrome, like, talking at a million miles per minute. This is where the traffic is, this is where the traffic is, this is also where the traffic is, there's traffic here too, but this is where the British stole all of our stuff! Definitely do not watch this movie if flashing lights mess you up, you will regret it. But out of all the things in this amazing Spider-Man movie, there's one thing in particular that made me fall in love with it. It's a short scene that only lasts about a few seconds, and when I saw it in the theater, my mind was blown. Let me show you that scene right now. Go away, go away. See you later. <laughs> that, that, that right there. Did you see that? Did you see that? As I sat there in the crowded theater, looking at the screen in utter disbelief and awe, I had to resist the urge to scream, THE WRITERS HAVE BRAIN CELLS! LET'S FUCKING GO! Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! That's what it's all about! Woo! If you haven't figured it out yet due to context clues and the literal title of the video, today we're going to be talking about The Spot. I am... The Spot. <laughs> That's not funny! Don't, don't do that. He's a complete loser nerd who became evil because he got hit by a bagel. And I also think he's my new favorite supervillain in any superhero movie ever made in all of time. And to understand why, we need to talk about High Guardian Spice. Oh, God damn it! Okay, but in all seriousness, to understand my love for this character, you have to start thinking with portals. Teleportation and portal creation is, in my opinion, one of the strongest superpowers ever, with exceptions for super speed, reality warping, and the ability to avoid doing your taxes. It's also, personal opinion, one of the coolest looking superpowers of all time, if you do it right. Anyone who recognizes this logo will tell you that portals are some of the coolest fucking things ever. And because portals are so awesome, they often get added into a lot of fictional works and you end up seeing them almost everywhere. Being able to stitch two points in space-time together is a very awesome power. But there is one problem with adding portals to stories. A lot of the times, people fuck it up. It's a similar thing with super speed. Whenever it's added into a story, you have to take special considerations in mind or else the whole thing is going to fall apart. Especially if the portals don't have solid limitations put on them. To explain what I mean, I want you to think about this, all right? How many stories do you know involve someone breaking into a place to steal something, breaking out of a place to escape, or traveling from point A to point B? My bet is you know a lot of stories like that. And if you were to add portals, all of those things I just described would not work anymore. Why would you need to break into a place when you could just use portals to get in and get out instantly? And why would you need to break out of a place when you could just use portals in the exact same way? And why would you need to travel anywhere, just use a portal to get there instantly? I want you to imagine your favorite heist movie that doesn't involve any supernatural powers and just add portals to it and see how well the plot holds up. I'm willing to bet it doesn't hold up at all. Overpowered abilities can completely break an entire narrative if you don't deal with them properly. <coughs> now, a lot of writers who are forward-thinking and, you know, have brains decide to add solid limitations to these portals and teleportation whenever they come up. Like, maybe there's special areas you can't teleport to, or your portals only work over short distances, or they stay open for a very short amount of time, or something like that. But the Spots portals in the Spider-Verse movie have next to no limitations at all. Not only can he teleport anywhere he wants instantly, he can also travel in between dimensions at will. He's so overpowered that it makes you wonder, how do they stop this guy? They don't. And that's what makes the spot so awesome. The writers recognize just how overpowered his abilities are and actually lets him be overpowered. Now the spot is kind of a dummy and he would be easily defeated if it weren't for the fact that his ability to create portals is so overwhelmingly busted that there is literally nothing the main characters can do to stop him. Now early on he doesn't know how his powers work so he doesn't win all the time and Miles is able to quote unquote defeat him in clever ways by like trapping him in between portals or yanking things through portals he made. It's all very well done but once the spot actually starts snowballing and learning how all of his powers work he becomes near unstoppable. <laughs> Fuck your face! You weren't expecting that, were you? Oh no, neither was I! I'm in the zone! 
He uses portals and his own momentum to launch himself through the air like a cannonball. And he constantly covers himself with portals so that if you hit him, your attack just immediately gets redirected. There's almost nothing you can throw at him that he can't just send somewhere else immediately. How are you supposed to beat a guy if you can't even hit him? The answer is you don't. This guy is like very new to being a supervillain and yet so early on he's whooping the ass of three different spider people at once and there's nothing they can do to stop him. And this works very well because Spot is the main villain. He's meant to be an unstoppable force that the superheroes have to overcome. And a person with the ability to make portals definitely fills that role. And he uses the go-to portal tactic of just immediately sending anyone and everyone away from him by just teleporting them away. I mean, think about it. What are they supposed to do? He can just send them anywhere. The only reason he allows the spider people to stay anywhere near his presence is because he wants them to watch in terror as he destroys everything. And while he's comedic for a lot of the movie, he can switch from comedic to terrifying at a moment's notice with just how overpowered his abilities are. This is gonna be good for us, Spider-Man. You and me, we're finally gonna live up to our potential. You'll finally have a villain worth fighting, and I will be just a joke to you! I'm not joking when I say everything about this character is great. His motivations, his powers, his backstory, everything. It connects both to the first movie and to Miles as a character. And you may not like it, but this is what peak Portal performance looks like. So, lessons learned here. Portals are incredibly overpowered, and unless you're putting some very serious limitations on them, people who use them should be, like, demigod level threats. And the most important lesson of all, be careful what you do with bagels.